Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Let me get focused here. Okay. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. I wanted to do a video today that went into detail about how I am preparing for labor and delivery and postpartum care and things of that nature. Because, you know, when you look through YouTube, you see all of these beautiful, you know, what's in your bag videos, which I'm going to do, um, postpartum care videos, which I'm also going to do. <laughs> But I don't ever see something that talks about how you prepare um, for life after labor and delivery, especially those first two months. What should I do in order to um, prepare for that time frame in which I may not be able to move around and be as flexible um, and go in and out the house like I would normally do? So this video is going to be very detailed. It might be a bit long, but I wanted to tell you everything that I actually did to prepare myself and family for um, this hiatus that mommy is going to have, okay? Um, culturally, um, in the Caribbean, when you um, do postpartum care, it's 40 days, you know? It's 40 days to two months in which you, you are like in your home. You do not leave the home unless you're going to those doctor's appointments. Other than that, you're home, okay? Um, and my husband understands that I have done that since my, my son, my first child, I've did that with my toddler and I'm going to do that now with our third child or my third child. So, um, get a pen and paper, sit back, get some coffee, tea, hot chocolate, water, um, you know, juice, whatever you want to drink and take notes because some of these things you may have already known and some of these things you may not have actually thought of. But again, I just want to go into detail and talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing to prepare myself, household, and family for my 40 days or 60 days of being off the grid um, and not completely available as I normally am. Since I work full time, the first thing that I did was kind of look at all my work stuff, right? Like make sure I clean out my emails, contact my clients, customers, make sure they understand that I'm not gonna be there for a specific um, amount of time, who they should contact um, if they were to need anything and, um, you know, getting my out of office there, um, transitioning my work to someone else, um, you know, all my work stuff. I got all that situated. Um, and made sure I cleaned out my office just to make sure everything was organized so that when I do come back, I'm not going into clutter or mess. I'm going into, you know, a, a, a fresh and clean and organized workspace. I also wrote some notes down so that I don't forget um, um, what to kind of talk about today because, oh, well, I also say, um, I did, I would say about a month before my due date, um, I did write out a list of all the things I didn't want to forget, um, especially those things that I thought would really, really be really important and might impede on our household running smoothly um, if I did forget. So I did write down a list. So you may want to do that, you know, at least a month in advance, sooner if you like. Um, write a list of everything you need to do, reminders for yourself, and then check them off as you go. So let me go ahead and look down my list. Um, what I also did was an inventory of our food supply <laughs> in the house because I'm not going to be cooking every single day. Um, we might have to order out. My husband might cook or I just may cook. I don't know. But we did an inventory check of all our food supply, our deep freezer, refrigerator, regular freezer, cabinets, pantries, and so forth. And I made a list of all the items that we were low in and all the items that we absolutely needed. I normally do this inventory check ever so often anyway. And when I go grocery shopping, I do an inventory check, but I wanted to make sure that we had sufficient um, supplies in terms of food and drinks and perishable items, um, meat, and things of that nature, um, snacks. I wanted to make sure I had enough for at least, um, not 30, 60 days. So we made a list of all the things that we needed for a complete 60 days. And then I, I normally do my grocery shopping anyway, unless I'm going to Costco. I do my grocery shopping online where I order all my groceries 
and then my husband or I go and, you know, pick them up. Um, I do that with, you know, Walmart and Kroger or whoever else might have that service available. And I not only save money for the budgeting um, process or for, for budgeting purposes, I save hundreds of dollars. It's ridiculous by sticking to my list and not going into the store. Okay. That's another video. But again, it just um, ensures that I have everything that both I and the family may need for that 60 day period. What we also do is take an inventory of all the other things in our house, our household products, you know, hygiene products, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, um, if we need air fresheners, if we need, you know, um, paper towels or um, body wash, um, you know, um, shaving cream or, you know, whatever, lotion. Um, I, we make a list. We first do an inventory, go throughout the bathrooms, go throughout the cabinets in the home, the laundry room to make sure we have sufficient supply and we're not low on anything. And then we go ahead and we add that to our shopping list. Okay, so again, we make sure we have what we need for at least 60 days so that we're not going out and making any purchases during that time frame. Because normally I go do that type of shopping and I'm my plans, unless it's an emergency and I have doctor's appointments, my plan is to not leave the house for at least 40 days. Okay, that's culturally in the Caribbean. That's what we do. 40 days in, in the house. Just, yeah. The next thing I have here, and I'm not... um saying anything in any particular order. There is no order of importance in my list. It's just a matter of, you know, what I wrote down when I wrote it. Um, we also washed and detailed our cars. So, you know, just making sure the car was clean and it was sanitized and it, you know, um, all our items in there were organized and things of that nature. So we got our vehicles detailed. Um, we put the car seats within the car the car seats, we put them in at least two weeks before my due date because, you know, if my water broke early, you know, that was just there. Um, so, yeah, we did that. Also, what we did is that we made, you know, we checked the maintenance on our vehicles. So we went ahead and checked the maintenance on our vehicles. You know, do we have air in our tires? Um, we filled up our gas tanks. Um, are we due for an oil change and things of that nature? And if anything was coming up due within the next 60 days after I gave birth, we kind of went ahead and did it. So if we were like a month out for an oil change, we went ahead and did it. If we were, you know, we just checked the tire pressure, just making sure the vehicle is um, um, ready to go in case of emergency. So that's something we also did. What we did in our home, um, same thing, like when you, you know, you review or go through what needs to be maintained on your car, we, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, dear. Okay. <laughs> My husband is flirting with me. Ooh. Okay. So, um, just like, you know, with your vehicle, how you, you know, you make sure your gas is full, check your tire pressure, make sure your oil um, does it need changing or if it does go ahead and do that? We did, we did the same thing in our home. So my husband went through the home and, um, looked at all the air filters and the air purifiers to kind of look at where they do to be changed. And if they were coming up for the next, you know, 60 days, just go ahead and make those changes. So he did do that as well. And he did that about two weeks before I was due. Also about, um, two weeks before, um, we did a thorough cleaning of the home. My husband did most of the cleaning where we, you know, we clean the baseboards, you know, um, clean out the cabinets, especially in the bathrooms, making sure we throw everything away that we don't need, restock everything, you know, the refrigerator, clean that out, um, you know, mop and vacuum and focus on the tubs and the showers and things of that nature. Um, we clean on a weekly basis anyway. But um, we do deep cleanings as well. So we just went ahead and did our deep cleaning early throughout the home because that won't be happening within the next 60 days. What I also did was make a list of all of the items that I would need in my postpartum kit. And we, you know, we stocked up on those items, created my postpartum kits, and we put them in the bathrooms downstairs. We have two bathrooms downstairs, so we did go ahead and put a postpartum kit in the guest bathroom. 
um, and in um, our bathroom, in our um, master bedroom. Um, you can also put a mini postpartum kit if you think you're if you have upstairs within your home You can also do a mini postpartum kit and put it in the bathroom that you may um, Frequently use if you happen to go upstairs within the time frame that you're going to be you know on hiatus within your home The next thing that I did was review all my bills I reconciled all my bills against the bank. We do that on a, you know, weekly, bi-weekly basis anyway, but I went ahead and did a big reconciliation um, for our budget. And then I went and I made sure I looked through all of our um, bill accounts online because we do automatic payment for 95% of everything. So I just went ahead and made sure that those things were still on automatic pilot. Um, although I knew they were, I just wanted to double check anyway. So I made sure that everything was still on auto pay. Um, I made sure the due dates were still in alignment to um, the dates in which we would get paid. Um, and then if, you know, in reviewing your bills, if, you know, there needs to be any changes where you need to change any due dates for whatever reason, um, we made sure that we did that because, again, within the next, you know, 40 to 60 days, although my husband could is more than capable of doing it, I normally maintain the budget. And then we have budget meetings on a weekly basis, sometimes biweekly, where we, well, was biweekly on paydays, where we talk about the, what, you know, what's coming in and what's going out and things of that nature. So, um... I went ahead and made sure all those things were taken care of um, in advance because within the next 40 to 60 days, I may not feel like doing those things. So I made sure he understood where everything was, passwords, um, how to check um, and reconcile um, certain things. Again, although he knew how to do that, I just gave him a refresher to make sure that he understood where to go. It's not like I'm going anywhere. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be home. It's just that I may be tired or sleepy or I may not want to be bothered. So I just want to make sure that he can be completely independent with everything that we may need within the home and fully take care and take over everything with little to no um, assistance for me just in case you know, something happens and I can't um, physically, emotionally, or mentally be there to do those things. Um, let me see what else we have. Um, oh, yeah. I also um, set up my allotments with my um, employer. So allotments are, you know, when you get paid, you kind of tell them how you want your money distributed, you know, through various bank accounts. So I went online um, through my employer's um, site and I kind of looked at the next paycheck that's coming up and I made sure I allocated my funding the way it needed to be done for um, the next two weeks. Now, that is something that I'm going to have to do every two weeks anyway. You know, that can't be done automatically because my allotments change every pay period depending on what, what bills are coming up. So that's something that I am going to have to do every two weeks, although I am on my mommy hiatus. Um, as you may know, I do homeschool my son, mommy, so I did set up all of his independent day information. Mommy. So again, I did set up all of his independent work. We use Evernote. We use a bin system, a folder system. You know, I, again, I set up all of his assignments where he can be completely independent for the next 40 days, 40 to 60 days. Um, and if you are interested, you can kind of look through my playlist to kind of um, see how I homeschool and, you know, what I mean by independent days and how I set that up for him. Now, if you are not homeschooling, um, you know, your child is in school or they're enrolled in various programs. Like my son, although he's not in public school, he is enrolled in like STEM programs or science classes and things of that nature. So you, what you may want to do is look at your schedule and look at the classes that are coming up and determine, do those need to be rescheduled? Um, if they're not going to be rescheduled, who's going to take your child to and from those activities, after school activities, who's going to take your child to the activities and pick um, him or her up? 
for school if they don't ride the bus who's picking your child up they go to aftercare who's picking your child up who's taking your child to school in the morning if they don't ride the bus um, if they're going to a camp or a program over the weekend who is taking them you know so if that's going to be you because you may not have anyone to help you maybe a single parent then it's going to have to be you or you can ask a friend or a relative or you can just reschedule or cancel right and if you have a spouse you may want um, to make arrangements so that he or she, I'm sorry, so that he knows that um, that's something that he's going to be responsible for doing. So making sure he has access to the addresses, phone numbers, and things of that nature so that he knows where to go, you know, what time he needs to be there. Um, again, just to make the transition smooth for your child and for your spouse. Um, you may want to also do any self-care rituals or routines, you know. Do you want to get your manicure before you, you know, deliver or your pedicure before you deliver? Do you want to get a pregnancy massage before you deliver? Those are the things you want to think about. Schedule those things. I did, you know, and I did them like two weeks before. Um, so, like, as of this video, this video will be posted and I'm probably will have, I, I will have probably already delivered the baby or... Um, I'll be going into delivery maybe, I don't know, but, um, I did those things two weeks before. So I did my nails, I did my, um, you know, manicure and my dipping powder for my nails and I did my pedicure. And as you can see, I got my hair done. Now I will say for those persons who have, you know, kinky curly hair for my, you know, African-American sisters and for my black and brown sisters, and, or, or even if you don't have kinky curly hair, you know, how do you want your hair? Like, are you just going to do a ponytail? Because, you know, that you can do that. But with my hair, I can't sit with a ponytail for 40 days. It's not going to happen. And during those 40 days, I'm not going to wash my hair, you know, because in our culture, we don't believe that you should, you know, wash your hair because your pores are open or something like that. You know, that's just something that is a cultural thing. I don't know how many people outside the Caribbean do that. I think some African cultures and some Asian cultures also believe in the whole 40 days postpartum care, you know, where you're in your home, you're not going anywhere, your child's not going anywhere, the infant, and you know, you're not supposed to take a shower every day and you're not supposed to wash your hair at any point in time unless you have to. So I decided, as you can see, I decided to go ahead and get twist. Um, in my hair and this is going to stay in my hair for about um six to ten weeks yeah it's about six to ten weeks and then i'll go ahead and take it out wash it and you know do my natural hair like normal so that's something you may want to consider and think about in terms of um tot schooling my toddler is two years old so what i did for her is you know her toddler learning folder and her um, flashcards and some toys and stuff. We brought some of those things downstairs, put them in a big bin, and they're either under my bed, they'll be in our office, which is downstairs, or they'll be in my closet. So that, you know, if my husband goes to work and she's down here and I need to keep her occupied, we have the things that she loves to do um, downstairs where I can quickly have access to it or she can go get it herself and she can entertain herself and I can entertain her as well. Um, I said earlier that, you know, I do homeschool. So my son's independent days, you know, I still have to check his work ever so often. I still will do, um, what I call, what we call poetry tea time with him. We'll still have our meetings on a weekly basis to talk about his progress and tracking his hours and assignments and things of that nature. So I'm still planning on doing those things with him, you know, about two weeks after I deliver. So I put all of my, you know, teacher, um, um, not, what's it called? Um, oh my goodness. I have a brain fart here. Brain freeze. All the answer keys. There it is. The answer keys, all the answer keys for whatever he's doing. I have that in my bin. I have my poetry tea time books that we're going to read aloud together. I have that in my bin. Um, you know, a little whiteboard with the expo marker and a eraser. I have that in my bin. Um, so anything that I may need to, you know, check his work, anything that I may need, um, to do, uh, my, my agenda planner is also in that bin. 
anything that I need to be successful and be smooth in the process of still doing a little bit of um, administrative stuff when it comes to homeschool and a little bit of homeschooling. I put all that in a bin and again, I put it under my bed or it can go in my closet or it can go, you know, in our office, which is downstairs. So it's easily available, easily accessible. So I don't have to go up and down the stairs to and from the homeschool room to kind of um, make those things happen. If you're interested in what I just talked about in terms of homeschool, again, go to my um, playlist and look for various homeschool videos if you are interested in that kind of stuff. And um, I think this may be the last thing, but what I also did was, um, you know, prepare the room wherever you're going to spend your, the most of your time, make it comfortable for you and baby. So I prepare, well, me and my husband prepared um, the room so that everything that I need is right there near me. So you already know how to prepare a space for an infant Lana. based on, you know, past experience or based on other YouTube Lana. videos. So go ahead and do that and also prepare a space for you. You know, all the clothes that I know I was going to wear, you know, for the next 40 to 60 days, I'm not going anywhere. So it's going to be like, you know, tights, um, loose slacks, big shirts or gowns or whatever, you know, I put all of that in one spot, you know, so I kind of um, rearranged my drawers to have one spot where I had everything next to my bed. Um, or you can put it in your bathroom, um, um, in your closet or wherever you want. But I made sure I had one spot that had all of my um, socks that I would want to wear, all the attire that I wanted to wear, um, through the, for the next, you know, few weeks so that I don't have to rumble through clothing or drawers to find anything. I had all that in one spot. You know, I just made sure that everything was convenient for me, you know, um, since I am not going to, you know, be using certain um, cosmetics or fragrances, I made sure that, you know, for example, within my tub or, um, I won't be taking a, a bath, but within my shower, I removed all my smell goods, you know, because I'm not going to need it in the shower. So I have all that stuff there. So I just make sure I put the items that I know I would use, which are fragrance free within my, within our um, shower. Everything else I kind of put aside, you know, and I decluttered if I had any clutter. Again, I clean and organize on a weekly basis so we don't have very much clutter at all. But if I found a hot spot, which is an area that had, you know, too many items, I went ahead and cleared that off so that I have a clear mind, I feel at peace, and things of that nature. So if you do some of these things in preparation for labor and delivery, your postpartum care will be so much easier. So again, if you, you know, if you just um, incorporate some of these things or write down some of the things you don't want to forget to do, I may have forgotten lots of things, but again, these are some of the things that I paid particular attention to just to make life easier for myself um, for the next few weeks and life easier for my children and my husband for the next few weeks. And if you have friends and family um, who you um, who live in your city, you know, ask them to come cook for you. You may have friends that will um, come and do some cooking and watching your children for you. If you have any other children to give you a moment of rest and peace, you know, get those things organized. Talk to other people and see what you can do to make life easy for any for everyone involved, right? So if you have any questions for me, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment box below. And as always, guys, you be blessed and make it a great day. Bye.